Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in the last video we talked about uniform experiments and uniform probabilities and in this video we're going to talk about when we have a situation where the experiment's not uniform. Uh, how do we calculate out the probability when all of the different events have different probabilities? And the basic idea is that we're going to try to take the problems that we're given and turn them into problems that have uniform distributions. Then we're going to solve the problem in that uniform distribution and then come back to the problem that was asked. So first a couple of little definitions and thoughts and then we'll uh, jump into some examples. So first off, in many cases an experiment is not uniform. But we can always calculate the probability of an event by the following formula. And that formula is that the probability of an event E is going to be equal to the sum of all probabilities S where we sum over all of the sample points S that are in E. So in other words, we're basically just breaking down that property we had before. Remember that the probability of E union F, and recall from our last video, if these are disjoint, this is just the sum of the probabilities. So really we're just kind of generalizing this idea. Each of the sample points in E are disjoint from each other. So all that we're doing to find the probability of the union of all these sample points, which is just E, we're just looking at the probability of each individual sample point and summing it together. So we're generalizing this idea on a bigger scale to all the sample points in E. Now if E is any event, and we've already talked about some of these properties for sample points, but now just generalizing it out a little bit. If E is any event, and I need to fix this a little bit, we're always going to have that 0 is less than or equal to the probability of E is less than or equal to 1. So the probability of E is 0 if and only if E is impossible, which usually in an experiment means that it's the empty set. right? If we have our sample space has these sample points, if all of those sample points are actually possible, then the only way we have an event that's impossible is if it's empty, if it doesn't contain any of those possible sample points. Otherwise, this sum would not be 0. Now, the probability of E equals 1 if and only if E equals certain, if and only if E is certain. And this, again, I've talked about this before, this usually only happens if E as an event is the entire sample space. So if every sample point possible is in E, then E is a certain event and we'll have probability 1. Now we talked about this last video as well. If E and F are disjoint, then the probability of the union is just the sum of the probabilities. But in general, for any events E and F, whether they're disjoint or not, the probability of the union is going to be the probability of E plus the probability, probability of F minus the probability of the intersection, right? This comes from part five when we talked about uh, looking at the orders and then back to our definition of probability. And this number six, this is going to be pretty important, uh, not just for this video, but for the next several videos. The probability for an event not happening is probability of E bar, which is equal to one minus probability of E. Now E bar, of course, just means the complement of E in the sample space. So it's going to be all the sample points in S that are not in E. So the probability of one of those happening is 1, which is, you know, the probability of something happening, minus the probability of E. Now this is particularly useful for problems where, uh, let's say I need to find the probability of rolling a 2 or more on a die. Well, I could just find the probability of rolling a 1 and then say, well, 1 minus the probability of rolling a 1 is the probability of not rolling a 1. And it makes it very easy to solve those problems. So we'll see some more examples of that later. But first, let's jump into some examples here uh, for these non-uniform -distrib non distribution problems. So first, two dice are rolled. What is the probability that the total roll is an 8? So now looking at this, if I break up my sample space into all the possible rolls, so let's say my S is 2, 3, 4, all, you know, 8's in there, all the way to 12, all the possible rolls on two die, well, now we're in a non-uniform situation, right? Each of these rolls has a different probability. In fact, it's twice as likely to roll a 3 as it is to roll a 2. There are twice as many ways to roll a 3 as there are to roll a 2. And all of these are going to have different probabilities. So we needed to find a way to break this down into a uniform experiment. Now, one way that we could break it down to a uniform experiment is instead of using this S, I'm going to have my S be all possible rolls. So I could get the roll 1, 1. I could get the roll 1, 2, I could get the roll 2, 1, 
And it's very important that we notice that these are different rolls, right? If I'm rolling two die, I could have die one have a one and die two get a two, or I could have die one get a two and die two get a one. These are different rolls and we have to count both of them, right? It's not just the roll one, two. We could say maybe one of our die is white and one of our die is red, something like that. But if we make this our sample space, now we're in a uniform distribution, right? The order of S, by our multiplication principle, I'm rolling two die, each die roll is an experiment of order 6, so my sample space S has an order 36. There's 36 possible rolls here, and they're uniform. Each of these rolls is equally likely to every other roll. So now I just need to break my experiment down into all of the possible rolls that total an 8. Well, I don't have any 1s because 6 is the highest roll and 1 plus 6 is 7, so that's not good enough. So I'm going to start with 2, 6. 2, 6 gives me an 8. 3, 5 gives me an 8, 4, 4 gives me an 8, 5, 3 gives me an 8, and 6, 2 gives me an 8. Now notice that I have both 2, 6 and 6, 2, but I didn't write 4, 4 twice. This is a fairly common mistake. Um, people kind of think, well, I need 3, 5 and 5, 3, so I need 4, 4, and then I need to flip them and get 4, 4 again. But that's not quite what's happening, is it? We're just talking about different rolls. So if my red die is 3 and my white die is 5, that's different than if my red die is 5 and my white die is 3. But if my red die is 4 and my white die is 4, that's not different than getting 4, 4 a different way, right? There's only one way to get 4 and 4. So all this to say my order of E is going to be 5, and now that we're in a uniform environment, I can calculate my probability of E just by looking at the order of E over the order of S. And the order of E over the order of S here is simply going to be 5 over 36. All right, so we've taken our experiment and we've broken it down into a uniform environment. Now I could have just as easily said, well, each of these rolls has a probability 1 over 36, and then used that formula that we had before, right? We had we had this formula. So if I looked at each of those rolls having a probability one, th 1 over 36 and added them up, there were 5 of them. So I would have gotten 5 over 36 this way as well. right? We could do it either way. Now let's look at one more example here. Three coins are flipped and the number of heads is recorded. What is, are the possible outcomes and what is the probability distribution? Now the possible outcomes for our answer, right? when we're, when we're working on our solution, the possible outcomes are going to be this S it's going to be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Right? This is what we're actually recording. We're recording the number of heads. So that's what we're concerned with. So the possible outcomes in terms of number of heads is 0, 1, 2, and 3. But again, these sample points are not uniform. Right? It's not an equal probability. So I need to take a look at this in a uniform type environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and we're going to do a kind of a little problem on the side here in a uniform environment and use that to come up with our answers over here uh, that they're looking for. So I'm going to call my uniform environment sample space S prime. And what I'm going to look at in S prime are all the different combinations of heads and tails, right? So this is going to have heads, 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 tails, heads, etc. And again, if we look at the simple experiment, flipping a coin that has order 2, I'm doing it three times, so by my multiplication principle, the order of s is equal to 2 cubed, or in other words, is equal to 8. Now I need to break this down into, ex into events that correspond to the total number of heads. So I'm going to say that e0, or e with this subscript 0, this is going to be the event where I have 0 heads. So I only have one possible set of three flips that gives me zero heads. That's where I got tails on all the coins. So now that I'm in a uniform environment with this sample space, the probability of E0 is going to be the order of E0, which is 1, over the order of S, which is 8. Looking at the event space where I have one head, that's going to be heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, and tails, tails, heads. So it's order 3, so my probability of getting one head is going to be 3 eighths. E2, this is where I have two heads, which is the same as having one tail, so we should expect it to be the same as E1. So I have heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, 
and tails heads heads. So my probability of E2 is also going to be 3 eighths. And finally I have the event where I have three heads and that only happens if all three coins come up heads. So my event has order 1 and my probability of E3 is going to be 1 8. Now coming back over here to the question, uh, when we're answering this question, well, what are the possible outcomes? We already answered that. I could have zero heads, one head, two heads, or three heads. And what is the probability distribution? So we need to mirror what we've done over here, but really we're looking at the probability of zero heads is 1 8. The probability of one head is 3 8. The probability of two heads is 3 8 and the probability of three heads is one eighth. One eighth. Now just a quick aside, uh, this is the end of the material if you want to stop watching go ahead, but a quick aside, remember our Pascal's triangle? One, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. When we talked about counting I made a connection between these pas this Pascal triangle and different events. If we look at x plus y cubed in our binomial theorem, we could think of this single factor, x plus y, as being a coin flip. We could say that if x is multiplied through, that means that I got a head, and if y is multiplied through, that means I got a tails. So if I write in the terms here, this is x cubed, this here, this is x squared y, this is xy squared, and this is y cubed, well this Pascal's triangle is basically doing this problem for us, right? Um, if I do this three times, that's the same as doing three coin flips, I can say x is my heads, so I have one where I have three heads, I have three where I have two heads, three where I have one head, and one where I have no heads, and the total number is three plus three plus one plus one, which is eight. So this would be the easy way to do this problem with familiarity with the triangle. Like I said, I'm not going to go into using the triangle too much, but uh, if you're interested, this is something that can be quite helpful. Now in the next several videos, we're going to be looking at uh, probabilities using our combination and permutation functions, and I'll break it up into three different types of problems that we'll look at over there. So we'll see you there.